On August 3rd, 1941, three avid fishermen and poker playing pals boarded this railroad car in Washington, D.C., looking forward to a 10-day fishing excursion off the coast of New England. They were joined by the fourth member of their party, a wealthy and well-known executive with a certain amount of celebrity who was followed by a cadre of reporters. The four fishing buddies boarded this car, headed for New London, Connecticut, with the reporters in tow. At New London, the four pals boarded the wealthy executive's yacht for a relaxing day of ocean fishing off Martha's Vineyard. Once out of sight of the reporters, the yacht was met by the U.S. Navy heavy cruiser Augusta. The wealthy executive was taken aboard and transported to a remote location off the coast of Newfoundland where, on August 9th, he was transferred to the British battleship Prince of Wales for a secret meeting with the British Prime Minister, Winston Churchill. By now, you've probably deduced that the wealthy executive was President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And now you know that this railroad car, located at the McCormick-Stillman Railroad Park in Scottsdale, was the initial vehicle in a plot to mislead the American press and facilitate a top secret mission prior to America's entry into World War II. The meeting between FDR and Winston Churchill resulted in the Atlantic Charter, a joint U.S. and British declaration of democratic principles in opposition to Nazi Germany. By the way, once the fishing trip was concluded, the four buddies rode this railroad car back from New London, Connecticut to Washington, D.C., probably playing a few hands of poker along the way. Four months after the Atlantic Charter was declared, four months after the secret meeting, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and the United States found itself fully engaged in World War II. In order to protect the president and ensure additional secrecy with regard to his movements, this car was housed in a special underground facility beneath the Bureau of Engraving Building. This allowed the president to board unobserved for secret trips to U.S. military installations during the war. If you're a Canadian visitor or seasonal resident in Scottsdale, you're probably familiar with NORAD, the North American Air Defense Command, a joint Canada-U.S. air defense agreement. The initial agreement was reached between Canadian Prime Minister William Lloyd Mackenzie King and Franklin Delano Roosevelt in August of 1940 at Ogdensburg, New York, and signed in this railroad car. During their discussions, both Prime Minister King and President Roosevelt slept over in this car at a secluded railroad siding surrounded by Secret Service agents and soldiers with fixed bayonets. The initial agreement, called the Ogdensburg Declaration, was critically important to Canada's security as several regiments of the Canadian Army and most of its Air Force were deployed in Britain during the war. This car actually has a name. It's the Rolled Amundsen car. Let's take a look inside. Hi, Bob. Hi. How are you? Okay, how are you? Fine. This is Bob Adler. Bob is a docent here at the McCormick Stillman Railroad Park, and nobody knows more about the Amundsen car than Bob. He's going to take us for a walkthrough. Let's go. As we enter the, the rolled Amundsen, the first area that we come to is the area that was occupied by the cook and the porter. They were the servants in the car, or the crew. And the first door is the kitchen where they cooked for the President of the United States. Uh, in there you can see the stove, that, the coal stove that they cooked on. And in the mirror, you can see the refrigerator freezer units that are over on the left side. The second door is called the pantry, uh, also part of the work area for the cook and the porter and where they kept their pots and pans. Uh, it has a pass-through where the cook could pass the food through to the porter and he could take it out to the dining area and serve the president. The third room is where the cook and the porter lived while they were working on the train. 
Uh, it has a bed that pulls down from the ceiling, and the two chairs that you see down below uh, come together and make another bed. The little table that's there drops down and makes room for the chairs to come together and make the bed. This is the dining area where the president ate his meals and perhaps uh, spent time uh, meeting with people. Uh, the picture on the wall there is Mamie Eisenhower in the polka dot skirt. Uh, that was taken on Eisenhower's campaign trip in this car in 1952. At that time, the car was owned by the New York Central Railroad and they loaned it to Eisenhower for his campaign trip. He traveled around the country for two months living in this car and campaigning, but that's the only time they used it. And the picture is taken right there where it's hanging. The table that you see in the corner of the picture is the same table that's still here. All the china is the original Pullman china and silverware. The third door is where the president would have slept. That's the best room in the house, actually, and could actually be uh, called the presidential suite. Uh, it also has a pull-down bed, which probably hardly ever got used when the presidents were traveling in this car. Uh, and his bed runs in the other direction, so it's six inches longer than the other beds. It's six and a half feet long. And his room is a foot wider than the other rooms. And his is the only room that doesn't have a sink and toilet right in his room. And the reason he doesn't have a sink and toilet in his room is because he has his own bathroom uh, with a shower. And of course the sink and toilet as well. Okay. The third adjoining room that could be considered part of the presidential suite uh, could have been a sitting room for the president, but it also has a pull down bed and its own sink and toilet. So if the president had someone else traveling with him that needed their own room to sleep in, they could have slept in there. And this final room in the Roald Amundsen is called the Observation Room. And President Roosevelt spent a lot of his traveling time in this very room. In many cases, he played solitaire, sitting right where I am now. And there are three pictures up on the wall here uh, that show President Roosevelt sitting in the chair right where I am now. Wow. What a great place from which to give a speech. In fact, this car was used by Presidents Hoover and Eisenhower during their respective presidential campaigns of 1932 and 1952. Ike and his wife Mamie traveled the United States in this car for two months during the 1952 campaign. Earl Eisenhower Jr., a Scottsdale resident and historic preservation commissioner, shares with us some of the memories of his Uncle Dwight's campaign. Well, as I said a little bit earlier, two things. One was the old whistle stop train was a time honored political um, fact of, of life in those days. I mean, if you could get hold of a train, that, that was great. And another thing was that Aunt Mamie had um, an inner ear problem almost all of her life. So she couldn't, she only flew under duress. And in fact, the only time I remember her doing it was coming back from Paris. She was very sick, she had pneumonia double, triple, but she had to fly back uh, from Paris, and that, she didn't like it, but she had to. So that was one of the reasons that Dwight decided to do this train trip. It was time that he could spend with her, you know, in, in this car, he could, if he wanted to, seal himself off from uh, the rest of the entourage. Would, you can imagine a presidential campaign, there's more hangers on than you need to have. And he decided that was one way he and Mamie could spend a little time without disrupting the whole political uh, process that he was going through at the time. So he, uh, I think that was one of the, two of the big reasons, uh, you know, the, the historical reason of doing it plus the Aunt Mamie's condition. And I think that's when he went out on the end of the car and talked to the people. I think he enjoyed it because he was communicating with actual people. He wasn't doing it through television or radio or something like that. He was actually seeing faces in front of him. And I think he liked that part of it. And he, um, he to that extent, he enjoyed the, the political side of it because it was, you, know, you say he had a couple months on this card, 
they'd make these whistle stops, as they called them in those days, and it was, I was um, a little bit different attitude for him, but he mastered it very well because he had this initial attitude of people are basically good, and he went from that, that premise on. We hope you've enjoyed this brief visit to a railroad car with secrets, the Amundsen car at the McCormick Stillman Railroad Park in Scottsdale.